Hi everyone, thank you for watching my previous video. I got a lot of feedback as well as many questions. So this is a follow-up video that will address some of those questions as well as give new information. I have a new image utilizing the same technique but in a slightly different way. So join me, let me show you what it's all about. I'll begin by addressing the most frequently asked question that I've received in email and online, which is, Adam, I have dual band filters and a one-shot color camera. Can I apply this processing, this mapping scheme, to that configuration, the answer is no, not unless you spend a little money because you're gonna to need to get another filter. Generally, when you're working with a, an, you know, a dual band filter, you're only looking at two colors, HA and O3. Now in my course, Narrow Band Fast Track, I demonstrate how to process HOO images. You can, however, buy a filter from some companies that also have S203, and then you'll have all three bands with some additional O3 learning how to extract that information is something that I demonstrate in my course, but you'll end up with the three bands and then you can do this method of uh, color mapping the images. The next thing I'd like to point out is the color mapping itself in the, f in the sense that I used two different schemes between these two images. On the right, I mapped red as the hydrogen alpha with the colorized uh, S2 being the component that is highlighted across the face of the Rosette Nebula with the golds, uh, yellows, and oranges. Whereas it's the HA that's colorized. So I began with a base SOO image for the North American Nebula. So it's the S2 that becomes red. And then the HA becomes the highlight. So my recommendation is before you ever press a button or follow the steps of a workflow, you need to look specifically at the images themselves in order to determine what makes sense as far as that mapping is concerned. In this particular case, if I blink these two images, it's easy to see where the ionization fronts are at the top right and in the bottom left. That's where the S2 is particularly bright. Now the HA and the S2, they overlap one another significantly throughout this field. But imagine if I were to map this image with the uh, the sulfur as being orange, then I'm gonna have red everywhere because there would be this diffuse red nebulosity throughout the field. And then it would just be highlighted with a little bit of orange. It makes sense to me instead to have mostly orange everywhere, orange yellow, and then have the red be the highlight. Visually, that seems much more clear to me as far as a color mapping is concerned. That's how I settled on the image that you see on the left. The other common question that I've received deals with one that tries to compare different methods. The question is, is this like the 4X palette? And the answer is no, not really. Although there is some similarity, and let me explain where the similarity is. The similarities between certain palettes can arise when you take one of the color mappings and you make it yellow. What I'm doing by incorporating a yellow, so let me show you, we have the S2, or the SO here, and then I colorized hydrogen alpha in this case. But what does it mean to colorize something as yellow or gold? Well, what you're really doing is you are incorporating this particular element of the image in both the red and the green channel. That is, by definition, what yellow is. Now, we can determine what proportion it goes into green or into red, but we are actually inserting, in this case, the HA, into both the red and green channel. And there are many palettes that utilize this trick. You can use pixel math to do it and many other methods of doing that. So you're going to get a similar kind of colorization of the end result, but that isn't because the math is the same. In the case of the 4-ax palette, the way the math works is that you end up multiplying images. You suppress one color in the presence of another. That is not the technique that I'm demonstrating here. Here, this is additive color, where we're either screening color in or perhaps using soft light, but one color adds on top of another, which makes it extremely important that if you're gonna utilize the technique that I'm demonstrating, that you don't make images overly bright, ever because you're gonna be adding them together and you don't want to already put yourself in a corner by making them very bright. You'll notice how dark the SOO image is here before I incorporated the colorized version. I used Image Blend to do that. I do have a video showing exactly my steps in the Narrowband Fast Track course. So a 4X palette in this case 
would not look like this result, these very bright features here, which are the, the hydrogen alpha features that are showing up against the background of other bright things, um, that doesn't work in the same way with 4X. In fact, these colors would be suppressed in the, potentially, it depends on the scheme you use, but potentially suppressed in the presence of the O3 uh, signal that is present in the center of the North American nebula. And same would be true here um, in the Rosette Nebula image. You would suppress one color in the presence of another. That's a very different kind of result. In fact, what is interesting about the additive version, which is what I'm demonstrating here, is that if you add enough of the colors together and they're bright enough, you actually do end up with white. And you might see that as a con. I don't. I actually like to have bright, luminous images. And should the color saturation become dilute a little bit, that's okay for me. Because in this particular case, I like it. It so happens that the star that is the ionizing star of this nebula, it is, I believe, if I zoom in here, I believe it's this guy here. It's completely hidden behind the cloud, but you can tell that this part of the nebula is certainly the brightest. It shows up in all of the colors, and so the fact that it, it has a little bit less color there is just adding to that luminance uh, that I actually like, I find attractive, and I find it attractive that it lights up these other features here, all because that illuminating source is hidden behind the dust. That's what I wanted to point out in this particular quick video, just a few of the elements about um, some questions that I've received, as well as the logic behind how this particular technique works. Thanks for joining me.